Let's start with number 25. Write down an equation, that's good. One thing we always want to do is write down a question mark that indicates what the question is. So what is this question asking us for? What is the index of refraction? What well, would be a good symbol for that? And okay, so this is always a good start uh, to try to write down a question mark for what the question is asking us. Now, what was the information that we were given? We were told that the speed of light is 89% of its value in water. Oh, these are a little trickier than I thought, but speed of light in a certain substance is 89% of its value in water. Okay. So first of all, let's do water. Do we have a chart that we can refer to or something? For yeah, yeah, so let's look at a chart. What we want to do is a chart that ends. So backing up. Right. Actually, that's the number we were using in the last example, too. Right. But we can look up in that chart in the book that n is going to be 1.33. Now, remember, over here we're working on the water. Mm -hmm. um, what should we plug in for c? What does c stand for? Speed of light in a vacuum. That's right. Well, that's a constant. That might be in your inside front cover, or maybe you already know where to find it. And there you go. 2.99. That's right. Notice how close that is to 3 times 10 to the 8. So it's almost always safe to round that off to 3 times 10 to the 8. So we'll round our C off. To 3 times 10 to the 8. Uh, well, what do we have written down? Well, we have to find B. Yeah. Anytime you have an equation in one unknown, we automatically know what to do. Anytime we have an equation in one unknown, we should go ahead and figure out what that unknown is. The first thing is, um, I think that you thought the answer was 1.33 divided by 3 times 10 to the 8. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to do a little bit more algebra here. We can't leave this variable in the denominator can't just leave this variable down here in the right. denominator. Um, well, there's a couple things we could do. We could cross multiply. Maybe cross multiplying is a good thing to do. We could take the reciprocal of both sides. That's a trick that we've used a lot here, taking the reciprocal of both sides. Maybe I'll just cross multiply here, though. So that gives us 1.33b equals 3 times 10 to the 8. Mm -hmm. And that tells us that we're dividing into 3 times 10 to the 8. Okay, so let's uh, report that in scientific notation. One, two. Two point three times ten to the eighth. Okay. Um, we know that when things are supposed to slow down when they move into a different medium. Mm -hmm. Well, here we've slowed down a lot. We've gone from 3 times 10 to the 8 to 2.3 times 10 to the 8. The water has slowed us down. So it's important to have clear uh, in your notes the algebra that we did here. Um, and again, the big mistake people make is thinking they can do the algebra in their head. It's important to write down each step of the algebra. We can't leave a variable in a denominator. Uh, so if you have a variable in the denominator, a very good trick is to cross-multiply. When we cross-multiply, that gets the variable out of the denominator, and that makes it clearer how to proceed. 
Now, what does this V here stand for? This is the speed of light where? Well, remember this whole equation was for water. This whole equation for water, so this is the speed of light in the water. We figured out that in the water, because we used the index of refraction of the water. So here's the speed of light in the water. All right, now we have to do this all over again for what did they call it? The certain substance? They weren't very specific. So let's do this all over again for the certain substance. Okay, so we'll use this equation again now, but for the certain substance. Now, what's the information that they gave us? They told us that the speed of light in this substance is 89% of its value in water. Okay. How is that going to help us? It looks like you might have already worked with that there before you cleared it. Yeah. Um, so how does this help us that the speed of light here is 89% of its value in water? Well, what is the speed of light in the water? 2.3 times 10 to the 8. Okay. And, um, they told us that in this substance, the speed of light is 89% of that. You just multiply by So we can find 89% of that. Anything that we can figure out is going to be helpful to us in working through the problem. Okay. So what's going to be the speed of light in this substance? You are just up ahead. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Sounds good. All right, so the speed of light here was 89% of this. So I can do that. 2.047 times 10 to the 8. Right. Okay, and that was 1.46, or I rounded off to 1.47. This is an even bigger n than the water had. The water had just 1.33, and that's because the, the speed is even slower here. It's only 89% of what it was doing in the water. We're going, uh, n is telling us how much we've been slowed down. All right, this was a little harder than I thought it would be when we started. So you saw correctly at the beginning where we're going to have to use the n equals c over b formula. However, we had to use it twice, and the clue for that is they talked separately about water and this certain substance. So first of all, we had to use this formula for water, and that gave us the speed of light in water. Uh, and then they told us that the speed of light in this certain substance was 89% of that. Then we could use the equation all over again. So you can see every substance has a different n, because every substance slows the light down by different amounts.